Well, we, we just can't play too much of those Sean Paul lyrics. Uh, today we're going to talk about temperature. What do we mean by temperature? Now this is a topic that is relevant to many, many fields. All the fields of engineering science, the measurement of the physical properties of matter, astronomy, biology, medicine. We refer to temperature and we need to measure temperature in many, many fields. So the question is, what is temperature and how do we measure it? Temperature is also something very important in our everyday lives. One of the first things we do when we wake up in the morning is we check the weather or we check our iPhone to see what the temperature is going to be for the day so we'll know how to dress. So we might, for example, wake up and look outside of our, of our apartment window and we see this thermometer and it says minus 17. And of course, whoa, minus 17. And the first thing we think is surely surely the university is closed and I can just pull these blankets back over my head and just and just soak a little longer and also when we're greeting our friends one of the first things we usually say is it hot enough for you boy it was cold last night you know we we use this as, as a way I was gonna say as an icebreaker no pun intended we use this in our daily conversations and in our interactions with people because we all share temperature so first let's talk about the scales that we use to measure and to refer to this concept of temperature. And before getting to these temperature scales, I want to point out something to you, and that is that heat and temperature are related, but they're not the same concept. They're not exactly the same, but they are related. Temperature, as we will see, is an intensive property. It's an intensive measure of thermal energy, but thermal energy is depends on the quantity of the substance. For example, you can have two potatoes that come out of an oven, one a very small potato, one a very large potato. The large potato contains more thermal energy than does the small potato. Thermal energy depends upon the amount the two potatoes can be at the same temperature, but they possess a different amount of thermal energy based on the different mass of the substance. So temperature and heat are related, but they're not exactly the same. Okay, getting back to the scales. Now actually, scales for measuring temperature are relatively new. We've been measuring temperature using these scales for less than 300 years. As compared to other things that we measure, mass and distance and time, which are measurements that have, have a much older tradition. Now the concepts of hot and cold are very old, of course. In one of our lessons we'll talk about the ancient Greek philosophers and their concepts of matter being composed of earth, air, fire, and water, and that matter had different qualities, those qualities being the degree of, of dryness or wetness or hotness or coldness. So hot and cold are concepts that have been with us for a long, long time. It's just that we did not have ways to quantify temperature. But then in the early 18th century, the following temperature scales were developed and have been used with some modifications since then. And let's begin with the one that we are most familiar with in the United States, and that's the Fahrenheit scale. The Fahrenheit scale, as I'm sure you know, ranges from 32 degrees for the freezing of water to 212 degrees for the boiling of water. You can go lower and higher in temperature and in fact you can go into negative values for temperature. But the range that we normally think about would be the freezing point of, of water 32 degrees, the boiling point of water 212 degrees. In most countries a different temperature scale is used based on 100 divisions or 100 degrees between the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. That is what is called the centigrade scale, 100 degrees or 100 grades between these two points, the freezing of water and the boiling of water. Now in 1848 the centigrade scale, which had been used for hundreds of years, was, was renamed the Celsius scale in honor of one of the developers of these temperature scales, which we'll get to in a second. So we have Celsius or centigrade, which is used in most countries, a 100 point scale, a 100 degree scale. We also have a temperature scale called Kelvin, which goes from 273 degrees for the freezing point of water to 373 degrees for the boiling point of water. 
Okay, now we'll get to why it was developed in a, in a second, but a couple of things. Notice that for the first two scales, Fahrenheit and Celsius, they are based on properties of water. Another thing you'll notice is that the first two scales can have negative values. We don't indicate them in the table, but you can go below zero in the Celsius scale, and you can go below zero in the Fahrenheit scale. The Kelvin scale, however, is an absolute scale. It has an absolute zero point, and this absolute zero point is important. It is a temperature at which there is no motion of molecules, and there can be no transfer of heat between one substance and another. On the right of this slide is shown three cartoonish drawings of thermometers so that you can see the correlation between these scales. At the top we have the where water boils which on the Fahrenheit scale is 212, centigrade 100, and Kelvin 373. All the way down to the bottom of the thermometers in the Fahrenheit scale absolute zero would be minus 460 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. A scary number. It would be minus 273, actually minus 273.15, if you want to be picky, on the Celsius scale, and zero on the Kelvin scale. So that's, that's the definition of absolute zero on the Kelvin scale. Now a few other points of reference, if we go up the scale, we can see where air freezes, the temperature of dry ice, if you happen to be interested, but water. Water freezes at 32 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale, as we said in the table on the left, zero on the Celsius scale, and 273 on the Kelvin scale. Actually, again, it's 273.15, if you want to get real specific, on the Kelvin scale. Room temperature. Since we are most familiar with Fahrenheit, we would say that if, we, if the room temperature is 68 degrees, 68 or something in that range, that it is room temperature. This corresponds to approximately 20 degrees on the Celsius scale and 293 on the Kelvin scale. Body temperature. We think that a normal healthy human has a body temperature of 98.6 on the Fahrenheit scale. That, that's what you would use to tell if you had a fever, if it's above 98.6. On the Celsius scale, this corresponds to 37 degrees, and on the Kelvin scale, it would be 310 degrees. So this shows you the correspondence between those temperatures. Now let's talk about how these temperature scales were developed. As we, we said earlier, these are relatively new types of measurements. Also, just to uh, point out to you, you probably know this, that our bodies are actually very good at sensing temperature. One way we can tell if someone has a temperature if they're ill is we put our, our hand to their forehead or our cheek to their forehead because our skin is actually very good, very sensitive to slight changes in temperature. But even though we are sensitive, that itself is not a scale of temperature. We just know if it's higher or lower than, than our own temperature. If we go back in history, Galileo had something called a thermoscope, where he was able to measure a relative temperature, but he did not have a numerical scale for this. Shortly thereafter, a physician named Santoria Santoria, yes, repeated his last name, Santoria Santoria, that was his name, uh, added some gradations or a numerical scale to a Galileo's thermoscope. But the real development of a temperature scale was a couple hundred years later with Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit who developed the first mercury thermometer, the kind of thermometer that we have that we use for hundreds of years. He was a physicist born in Poland, lived in Germany, and not only did he develop the thermometer, the experimental device for measuring temperature, but he developed a scale and he based this on the properties of water, essentially. That is, he said, what is the lowest temperature I can achieve in my laboratory? And he would achieve this by having a salt-ice-water mixture, a slurry of ice, salt, and water. And he established that as zero on his scale. And then he said the highest temperature on his scale, 100 degrees, would be like body temperature. Well, that highest values at some point he said at 90 degrees and some point at 96 degrees and some at some points at 100 degrees uh, as he developed his thermometer others after him finalized on the current scale 
which has 32 degrees as the temperature of just ice and water at 32 degrees and the boiling of water at 212 degrees and as a consequence body temperature then became approximately 100 but actually 98.6 degrees. So the result is 180 degrees or 180 degrees steps or division between the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. Then about 20 years later Anders Celsius an astronomer developed another temperature scale based on 100 divisions with water or ice water being at 0 degrees and the boiling of water being at 100 degrees. And of course the convenience here is that there are 100 gradations or 100 steps, 100 degrees between these two points for water. And 100 is an easier number to work with. Actually Celsius had his temperature scale inverted initially with the freezing of water being at 100 and the boiling of water being at 0. Okay, and over to the left in this slide is a sketch of Celsius's thermometer showing that he had the inverted scale uh, in his original uh, definitions of the temperature scale. But a year later, a colleague uh, from France, Jean-Pierre Jean Christian, inverted the scale with zero being the freezing point of, of water and 100 degrees being the boiling point of water. Carlos Linnaeus the same Carlos Linnaeus who created the binomial nomenclature system for naming the species of plants and he also inverted the scale so that it went from 0 to 100, 0 for the freezing of water, 100 degrees for the boiling of water. And this just indicates the importance of having a temperature scale to scientists ranging from botanists to astronomers. Now the problem, if you say there is a problem with either the Fahrenheit or the Celsius scale is that it you can go to negative values. And this troubled some scientists, in particular William Thompson, shown in the bottom of this slide, who was a, a very noted scientist involved in a lot of different areas. He was born in Ireland and for most of his career was a professor at the University of Glasgow in Scotland. At one point he was honored by being called Baron, Baron of Kelvin or Lord Kelvin and he rationalized that there should be an absolute temperature scale with a zero point, a zero point in which there was no temperature. We'll see in another slide or so that this means that there's no kinetic motion of molecules but he was focusing on whether or not there could be a transfer of what was called caloric at that time or of heat between objects and he said there ought to be some temperature at which there can no longer be a transfer of this thermal energy or caloric between uh, bodies and that was that was his notion of an absolute zero and he experimentally determined the value of absolute zero which is minus 273 on the Celsius scale so he renormalized or he created a scale which we now call the Kelvin scale and as a result the freezing of water occurs at 273 on the Kelvin scale and the boiling of water occurs at the 373 degree point on the Kelvin scale. Now just as an aside we call it the Kelvin scale. He was called the Baron of Kelvin or Lord Kelvin because there is a river called the Kelvin River in Scotland and so you can imagine that if he had been in the United States we'd be talking about a Mississippi temperature scale or a Yakna temperature scale or something like this but it's the Kelvin scale that we talk about. There were others around this time who developed temperature scales. I happen to notice one scientist named Joseph Nicholas DeLille the reason that caught my attention is because I have a brother-in-law named DeLille. Now the DeLille temperature scale was based on 150 divisions between the freezing of water and the boiling of water. 150 instead of 100 so you can see it didn't catch on. Also DeLille inverted his scale uh, with 150 degrees being the freezing of water and knowing my brother-in-law this may not be so surprising that it was inverted. Okay. Well, we're going to pause now for a quiz before we return to part two, a second part on temperature in which we talk about the conversion between scales and also a little bit about the physical meaning of temperature.
and as we fade out, we'll return to Sean Paul telling us, Well, the way the time cold, I want to be keeping you warm. I got the right temperature for a shelter from the storm. Well,